Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. Let's say you got a newer Chevy Cruze, Malibu, Chevy Equinox, Buick Encore, anything with the 1.5 or 1.4 liter engine. They all have this vacuum pump hanging off the side of the valve cover here. So your intercooler pipe comes up over here, your little plastic covers here. These things are prone to failure, so let's take a look inside and understand what it does. This is what the pump looks like from the outside. You see here, it's got some type of rubber damper and a cam drive that drives from this slot. On the back side, you got a cover with five bolts on it here. You've got an oil screen right here. You've got a little oil baffle here. And then you have finally a suction port up here that provides a vacuum to your brake booster and other things on the car. You can see here, that you're actually looking at the back of your camshaft. That's what the pump keys into. You got an oil seal here. These don't really seem to fail. And then you can see the two oil ports on the engine here. The reason this is important is because when this pump fails, not only do you lose vacuum, it can potentially bind up and cause damage to this cam, whether it jumps the timing chain, cracks the cam, breaks the, the tongs off of it, or just causes other mechanical issues. So it's probably good to replace these pumps on some type of routine maintenance, but let's tear it apart and see what fails. Okay, so taking the front plate off, you can see that there's obvious wear. Now this is a steel plate with a coating on it. You can see there's obvious wear where the center shaft is rubbing it and the actual uh, rotor, we'll call it, starting to wear into this a little bit. This engine has 97,000 miles on it. It was not maintained wildly well, I'll say. So here's what the rotation of the pump looks like. You can see it's got this wafer that slides back and forth between the shaft here. What happens is you have a small amount of space right here. As it turns, this, this the amount of space here grows. This creates a small vacuum pocket. And then that vacuum is, you know, distributed to this port here or whatever. So this pump is always wet with oil, or at least it should be. And the oil does two things. It lubricates the pump, but it also seals the pump. So when these wafers are coming around here, these seals are coming around the outside, the oil lubricates it, but it also helps seal them. You'll see there's an oil port that right inside this bore here that's critical because you have no bearing here you just have this steel rotor turning inside of this aluminum housing and that rides in the back of the camshaft so that gets first oil and because this whole chamber is under vacuum it pulls the oil down this little channel right here into here and now you're lubricating the entire thing this rotor or paddle whatever you want to call it is made out of some type of composite plastic and sometimes these things crack and they totally explode and they grind up in here and they bind everything up and then you also have what i'll call the seals or wipers like if you were thinking of a rotary engine i'm not sure what these are made of these seem to be made of some type of uh also some type of composite probably something with graphite and carbon in it and these are in decent shape, but you can actually see there's some aluminum transfer on them. So in my opinion, this pump is not very healthy. Let's look at why. So firstly, this front plate has quite a bit of wear on it. Now, it's like I said, this engine has almost 100,000 miles on it and you know, had a Jiffy Lube oil filter on it when I got it. So that tells you something. But listen to this. This pump is pretty scored up in here. Not that that's going to cause a problem. You know, you'll have a little less pumping efficiency. All right, your brake pedal will be a little harder than it should be. Maybe some of your evaporative emissions may not be as strong as they should be or whatever else they use it for in this car. But it's not the end of the world. The end of the world happens when this paddle disintegrates and breaks into many pieces and jams everything up. So whether you want to rebuild the pump, I don't know, every 75,000 miles or you just want to throw another one on, I don't know. But if you have one of those cars, I definitely would recommend this being some type of maintenance item. I don't know what GM thinks of this. These cars are fairly new at this point, but I don't see this pump lasting you know, 250,000 miles for everybody. I think that would be a very, very rare case. Um, keeping your oil clean, keeping your oil topped off will definitely help you prolong the life of this pump. It spins at half engine speed because it's running off the cam. So at 4,000 RPMs, this pump is turning 2,000 RPMs. That's no, that's nothing to joke about. I mean, 2000 RPMs here with improper lubrication could really tear this thing up quickly. So just something to be aware of. Well, anyway, if you were curious as I was, now you understand how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and block this off because I'm using it in an off-road application and I don't need 
this pump and I definitely don't want anything to do with its reliability. Thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage. See you next time.